Congratulations on getting your new travel trailer from Camping World or Gander. What do you say we take a few minutes and let's talk about some of the features inside that travel trailer. Now, your travel trailer is either gonna be something like this one here, an aluminum sided with the ridge siding, or it's gonna be one of these right here, the laminate or fiberglass travel trailers. Really the difference lies in the construction. On the aluminum sided RV, you're gonna have that wood studded with the blown insulation, kind of similar to what you have in your home. And over here on the fiberglass, you're gonna have the aluminum superstructure with foam insulation, and that's usually the case for both. Now, when you come up front, your travel trailer will have either a powered tongue jack or it'll be a hand crank tongue jack on it. If you do have the powered tongue jack, you'll notice you'll have two rocker switches in most cases. One controls a little LED light to give you some additional safety and security. The other one controls the, the actual tongue itself. So extend raises the RV, retract lowers the RV. That's to help you set up while you're camping, but also help you set up easier when you're hitching. Now behind it, you'll have either one propane tank or two propane tanks. They'll be 20 pounds or 30 pounds. If they're taller, they'll be the 30 pounds. And you should have a cover on there as well, which I'm gonna take off for you. Maybe. <laughs> this one might be latched in, Bobby. Oh, sure is. Okay. So you take the latch off, you raise the cover, and here you have your propane tanks. Now, if these are full, and you cut them open, you'll notice there's a little regulator back here that'll tell you if you have gas. You'll notice it'll either be a, a line like this or it'll be a pinwheel. When you flip it to the tank that you want and cut it on, open it up. If the light, if the indicator goes green, you got propane. Uh, if not, you don't have propane. And to change the tanks, you just flip them. If the arrow's pointing this way, you're pulling from this tank. If you're pointing that way, you're pulling from this tank. And then when you put your cover back on your propane tanks. Make sure that these notches are pointed towards the coach because air can come up under there and pop this off. Now, on most travel trailers, you'll also have these two rails attached to the frame. This is where your battery box will go. Some of them will have a battery disconnect box on the outside with a little red switch. Some, the disconnect will be someplace inside the coach, like the pass-through storage, or maybe even the kitchen. Now, your RV, travel trailer will also have either a mini diamond plated rock guard or a large diamond plated rock guard plus a roof that goes all the way over the top most of them will be a seamless roof that are fully walkable when you come around if you do have pass through storage or a storage compartment it'll look something like this if you have the led light you'll notice the controls inside your storage there you'll also have controls for your running lights right there as well now if you have uh, most RVs, most travel trailers nowadays come with solar prep, which means there'll be a little switch that looks like this or something similar on the outside or maybe, you know, on the sides. This is a 10 amp quick connect for your solar panels. What that'll do is that'll trickle charge your battery while you have the solar panels out. If you're lucky enough to have a travel trailer that has power stabilizer jacks or even better power leveling, you'll notice the controls will usually be inside the pass-through or on the side like we have right here. And it's pretty simple, it's just a rocker switch. Retract lifts them up, extends lifts them down. Now, if you do do the extension, but they don't come down at the same time, don't worry about it. Uh, once one side goes down, the other side will start to uh, go down and stabilize the unit. But once you hear the motor start making noise, that's when you stop. Because once those jacks are on the ground, it's a stabilizer, not a leveler. So you don't want to break it because it can't lift the coach. Your travel trail will have one or two types of stairs in it. If you do have the steel stairs, all you do is just follow the directions. They're very simple, but once again, be careful. Pull here to open. That folds down the second step, and then you have the retainer bar that folds down the bottom step, and there you go. If you do have an awning, uh, you will have an awning that has an adjustable pitch. It just depends on the type. So for example, this LCI Edge, which is a 12 volt awning, uh, has the adjustable pitch where you have the turn knob right here. All you do is you lower it to where you want it, and then you tighten it up, and that'll keep it in place. Just be careful when you do, because that can also allow the rain, if there's been some on top of it, to fall down on top of you. Nobody really wants an impromptu surprise shower. And before you roll the awning in, make sure you put it back to level, because if not, when you bring the awning in, that awning will be cockeyed and will not go in properly. 
If you do have an LED running light, you'll notice it'll be either underneath the awning or on the sides. And if you do need to manually override your awning, most of them will have this little rubber nozzle on the end like this one has here. You pop that out, it's a 7 16 drive in there. You just pop the little 7 16 head in there and you can manually move the awning in and out. Now your travel trailer will come with some great features in it. One of them is a hot water heater. Now you're either gonna have a Dometic or a Suburban and they differ only in the layout. They both do pretty much the same thing. You'll have a water pressure release valve. You'll usually have an anode rod here, whether it's metal or plastic, just be careful. And you do wanna swap that out or check it at least once a year. You will have a reset button or a reset switch. Plus you'll have this tube, which is the igniter tube. Now, if you notice that your hot water heater isn't working, get you some pipe cleaners and clean this out because mercaptan is the chemical that's in propane and bugs love it. So spiders and bees will nest in there. And if anything is blocking that tube like a web, it's not gonna work. You can easily clean that out with a little pipe cleaner. If you have a TV mount or external entertainment on your travel trailer, you'll have a mount right here for your TV. You'll also have a 110 GFCI outlet plus a cable connection. That's what those are for. This unit happens to have a gas electric fridge, which we'll talk a little bit more on the inside, but this is the back panel of that fridge. If you really are a science nerd and you wanna know how cool these things are, ask your tech to explain how that gas electric fridge works. The way that it cools with propane, it's awesome. If you do have a large nozzle like this with this little valve right here, that is your fresh water connection or your fresh tank fill. You fill that up. Obviously, if the water starts spurting out over here because it's to relieve the pressure inside the tank, that's how you know it's way too full. Your RV will also come with a furnace. Now this one happens to be the Dometic. Most of them are either Dometic or Suburban. And depending on the size, you'll either have one or two vents. The only thing here is don't put chairs or anything to block this vent because that is hot air coming out of it. And that can sometimes cause some issues, especially if it's a fabric chair. Now your travel trailer will either be single axle or double axle. In this case, we got ourselves a double axle. They will be Dexter Easy Lube axles. If you notice the green cap on the tire, that means these are nitro filled. And the Dexter Easy Lube axles, what that means is, you know, about every thousand miles or so, you can stick a grease gun in there, give it one, no more than two pumps, and that'll help keep those axles lubed as you go through. Now, this one also happens to have an enclosed and heated underbelly. All travel trailers do not have that, but it is a great feature because not only does it help keep the tanks insulated, it also helps keep the undercarriage a little more secure. Now, as I mentioned with the steel fold-up steps, if you do happen to have the solid step-over steps, whether it's the Lippert, the Moride, whatever, uh, they are pretty much all work the same way unless they're gas strut supported. And you'll notice the ones that are gas strut supported because there'll be a little cabinet on the side that controls the lifting and lowering of the steps, which just means it's easier to raise and lower. But with these, when you, when you wanna put the steps up in a way, make sure the door is all the way open and you do have a handle here, which locks the doors in place. You can turn it left or right, doesn't matter, but that's how you engage and disengage the safety lock. And when you're bringing the, the stairs down, you notice you have these little pins right here. This is how you get the bottom step to be safe and secure to the ground. You pop that out, move the legs, but what you want is you want that to be flush on the ground, but more importantly, you want this to be flush as well, because if you notice when this is raised up a little bit, you won't be able to close the door. Rear stabilizer jack right there works just like the front jack. If you do have a bumper, you'll have a four x four sewer hose storage on that bumper, good place to put the sewer hose. Just make sure it's cleaned out before you store it away. Spare tire mounted here on the back. You'll notice too that your travel trailer is either gonna come pre-set up with backup camera or pre-wired for backup camera. Both are great features. You're either gonna have 50 or 30 amp power service on your RV. Just make sure whatever you have, that this is locked into place. And you'll notice that they'll turn and screw in. When it's turned, it's locked in. Just make sure that it's securely uh, tightened as well. And if you're not getting power to your RV, always check the junction box. Some of the cables will come with lights to let you know that you're getting power, but just check the breakers to make sure that they're off and running. Now your slides will either be 
through frame or above frame slides. Uh, they'll be, you know, rack and pinion, worm groove. You'll have all types of different slides. You, your travel trailer should come with sealed safety windows that's tinted all the way around. You'll also have what's known as terminations on your RV, AKA the dumps. This is where you have your gray tank and your black tank and your sewer outlet connection. Just make sure that before you open up any of these, you are connected to something so that whatever's inside can be safely and securely dumped out. And if you are gonna be doing some dumping, just open the black tank first and then open the gray. So it helps kind of flush the system out, the tubes out a little bit more. Uh, if you are lucky enough to have a black tank flush on your travel trailer, this is a great feature. Just make sure before you hook up that water hose and do not use the potable water hose for this one, uh, make sure you hooked up to the water hose and before you cut it on, that black tank is open. Um, because a lot of times pyramiding can take effect in the black tank. And that's why you wanna have a little bit of fluid in there all the time, which means you don't have to keep it open all the time. But when you're flushing it out, make sure it is open because trust me, that's not a good day if you have it closed. External shower, your RV may come with an external shower with hot and cold. That's a great feature to have. And your travel trailer is either going to be magnetic or clipped storage doors with anti-slam. And a very nice feature will be a covered hinge on those. If your RV does have solar panels on top, uh, for example, some of the newer ones right now are coming with, with what's known as solar flex technology. That just means there's either a 200 or a 400 watt solar panel on top of the RV that will invert uh, some outlets inside the coach, which means you can actually power stuff off of those solar panels. So with the outside, what do you say? We go take a look at some of the features on the inside of your new travel trailer. Once you're inside your travel trailer, the first thing you really wanna look for is gonna be your command panel. Now, usually it's on the side of the cabinetry as soon as you walk into the main entry point. Now, you're either gonna have this hard mounted plate panel control system or you're gonna have a touch screen. The, really, the only difference is the touch screen, most of them will allow you to control some of the operation of your travel trailer from your cell phone. So it's very convenient and nice to have. But let's go through the functions of some of these. You'll notice you do have a little toggle switch right here that tells you how to do the awning. You can either retract it or extend it. Your lights will also have switches here. You'll usually have one for interior, exterior. If you do have a water pump, which you should, you'll have the control nozzle for that. The only thing with water pumps, if you're hooked up to city water, you don't need to run the pump. Now your water heater will either be gas or electric or both. Uh, most of the times, if you do not have electric, you'll just have gas. Uh, and if you really want a quick recovery, so if you're taking a lot of showers, you can cut both of these on to get you quicker hot water recovery. You'll notice your slide controls right there, as well as the monitoring system of your tanks and your battery. Here you can see we're full charge because we are hooked up to shore power. If you need to run the slides out and you're on battery and they're not running out, if you check the battery and it's below two thirds, that's why you don't have enough electricity, enough juice to operate the slides because you really uh, need the juice to run those out. Same thing with your tanks, your gray, your black, and your fresh. Now, if you've dumped your tanks and you hit these nozzles, but it's still showing full, that's because there are two sensors on the inside of your tank. And sometimes the, the water will get trapped in between those sensors uh, and it's just electric connectivity. Just give it 15 minutes to, to drain down a little bit, let the water run down the side of the tanks, come back and they should read empty. If not, you need to either flush them again or bring them in for service. Your travel trailer will feature a lot of great things on the inside, high ceilings, entertainment systems, air conditioning, HVAC heating systems. So you'll have, uh, for example, this one here is the Dometic. You could have the Dometic, the GE, the Suburban. They're either gonna be 15,000 BTUs or 13,500 BTUs. And your travel trailer could have one AC, it could have two ACs. If you're 50 amp service, your travel trailer is gonna have usually a, a 15,000 BTU AC and should be pre-wired for a second AC, usually in either the bunk room or the master bedroom. But they all pretty much operate the same way. You'll have a quick cool dump either here on the rear or on the sides. And what that does is that this allows for the air to come out quickly to cool you down. You close it, the air will then be ducted through your ducting system on the roof. If you do have an HVAC system like this one has the, uh, we, we saw on the outside, it has that uh, Dometic furnace on it. You'll notice the duct work inside the flooring. 
And there's a control panel that controls all of your HVAC systems, which should be located somewhere inside the main living area or the master bedroom or the bunk room, depending on how many ACs you have. And it'll look something similar to this. Now, if you are not getting any AC, make sure that you are hooked up to shore power. Uh, and then make sure that this control panel is getting electricity. If not, check your circuit breaker box, which we're gonna show you here in just a minute uh, as a way to make sure everything is working properly. You will have a sink area, a kitchen area, a cooking area, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, if you do uh, are lucky enough, your travel trailer has the undermounted stainless steel sink like this one with the apron. A lot of times you'll have the high rise faucet with the sprayer. Your cooktop will either be like a Greystone, uh, a uh, Furion, a Suburban. There's many great models out there, but if it is a three burner cooktop, the front burner will be high output and these run off of the propane. And you'll notice usually the far left switch is the igniter. And Bobby, I don't know if you can see the sparking in there, but you only turn this one way to get the sparking. And the way that you light your, ace, your, your, your cook plate is you push the control in for whichever location you want and turn it to either high or some of them will even have the little flame location. And then you just turn this to light it. Same thing for your oven. You push in and turn and there is your igniter. Turn this and then if we had propane, which we don't, this would fire. Now, if you know you have propane and it's still not working, you can lift the top of this plate up on most models, and there's a connector switch for the igniter over here on the side, on one of the sides. Sometimes in transit, that comes disconnected. You can just plug that back in. If it's still not working, bring it in. Let our service folks take care of it. You will have a microwave. There'll be 900, 1100. Sometimes you'll have convection microwaves. Uh, these obviously work the way microwaves work. Your refrigerator will either be a 12 volt a residential or a gas electric. And really the only difference between those is, you know, the residential is gonna pull from, you know, shore power. It's gonna pull a lot more than that 12 volt fridge wheel. And the gas electric will give you the option of cooling everything down by propane. Most of them, like this Dometic brand right here, will have the automatic switch. You got your on off right there, your freezer and your refrigerator. Now this plate right here is actually the cooling unit of the fridge, which means don't block it. Because if you do block that, it's not gonna be able to properly circulate the air and keep things cooled down for you. Your circuit breaker box will be right here. And you'll notice that these right here, we got the green light, which means everything's good and we're getting power. But if you ever take a look at these and there's a red light on any of them, that means that fuse is bad so you can replace it. It's a very nice feature in your travel trailer to let you know which one's working and which one isn't. You'll also notice that a lot of your travel trailers will have this LP02 detector, a very nice safe feature to have. While we're over here, let's talk a little bit about entertainment. Usually in the living area, sometimes in the bunk room and in the master bedroom, you will also have a TV. It'll either be on a swivel or it'll be you know on an arm that's stable, but you can angle it. This is a TV. There'll be a remote. Some of them will have sound bars built in. Uh, you will have entertainment options like this one here has the linear series, which all of them will have AM and FM. Most of them will be Bluetooth. Most of them will have the HDMI, the USB and the auxiliary connection. And if you're lucky enough to have a fireplace, these fireplaces are electric, which means you gotta be hooked up to shore power in order to operate them. There's a touch panel to control them or your buttons will be up top up here. Multiple light settings, multiple heat settings, and just all around a great way to give not only ambiance to your travel trailer, but also do a good job of heating it when you got that nice chill on the air. Now, if your RV has recliners, they will be RV specific recliners, which means they're made for RVs. They're durable, but they're lighter weight than what you're gonna find at the big box stores. So when you use our design centers, because you wanna put them in there, it's better to use the design center to upfit your RV with furniture as opposed to going to a big box store because they're made specifically for the RV. But they'll recline and operate just like regular recliners do. You'll have wood balances on your windows. You'll have shades, either roller shades, fabric or pull downs that give you true blackouts. And the great thing about these is if you do have the roller shades over time, these strings right here will become loose. 
The way you can tighten it up is you just take your finger and you just wrap it around the anchor at the bottom. Just do it on both sides so that your shade doesn't, you know, go cattywampus on you. Now, if you have a jackknife sofa like this one, uh, great for sitting. This one even has the incliner on it. So you pull this out and it's got the, you know, little chill leg right here, but it does double as a bed. So most of them uh, will, will operate similar to this. This one's nice. It has the pull handle. So you just lift and fold down. There you go. You got yourself a bed. Same way to put it up. Just always be careful. You know, don't, don't overstrain, don't hurt your back. If your travel trailer has a booth dinette or a U-shaped dinette, yes, great place to sit and enjoy meals, but also doubles as a bed. Usually there is storage underneath your booth dinette. And these feet right here are the secure locations for the table because to turn this into a bed, all you do is you take the legs off of the table, you put the table there on the feet, move the cushions out, and you got yourself a bed. Now, we head into the bathroom, and your travel trailer will have uh, either a full bath, where you have something set up like this, a sink, a toilet, and a shower. Sometimes you'll have just the shower and the toilet in one room, and the sink is separate. It really just varies on the size and the floor plan, but they all pretty much work the same way. You'll have hot and cold, you'll have a sink, you'll have a medicine cabinet or a mirror on the wall, giving you some additional safety or storage options. And your shower will either be a tub, shower combo, a tub, or just a shower like this one. You'll have the cloth curtains, you'll have the glass enclosures, but all of your showers will have the spray nozzle with the on off switch. Some of them will have the adjustable stream on the bottom plus hot and cold. You'll also notice most of the showers inside your travel trailers will also have a skylight over the shower. That not only gives you additional light, it gives you additional headroom as well. Your toilet will either be plastic or porcelain. It will have a foot flush. And the great thing about these, if you just need a little water, you just push the foot flush down a little bit. We don't have water in this coach and you need to open it up like that. You just push it all the way down. That is a rubber seal. So if you notice your toilet is draining consistently, just take some Vaseline, open it up and put it on the bottom of that rubber seal and that'll help out. In your master bedroom uh, or your bunk room, uh, just depending on what type of travel trailer you have, you'll have twin size beds, double bunks, you'll have you know, convertible dinettes, you'll have all types of stuff inside of bunk rooms, which really open up space and storage options. But in your master, you're pretty much gonna have the same setup. You're gonna have a bed either nestled north to south or east to west, depending on the layout. And you'll have either one or two nightstands with power options, plus ward storage, drawer storage. Sometimes the ward storage will be mirrored and a majority of your travel trailers will also have storage underneath the master bed. Some of them will be strut supported, some will not. But just a great option when you need that additional space. Now, if you're lucky enough to have an access point, you'll have one usually in the bathroom, the master bedroom, sometimes in the bunk room. Uh, and then in most cases too, you'll also have a spot for some entertainment. Uh, if your unit comes with a TV, it'll all be pre-mounted. You'll, you'll have it either here on one of the side walls or here on one of these walls, just depending on, once again, the layout, the type of door that you have, and the type of structure that the RV is made out of. So, panel doors will either be pocket, barn, or swinging. So many options that, I mean, you could just shake a stick at and you'd be shaking all day. But regardless, uh, your travel trailer will be a great way for you to see America the safest way possible. And if you are lucky enough to have a slide on your travel trailer, most of them have a head height of five feet, eight inches. Uh, and sometimes you'll even have a manual override for your slide if it gets stuck up top. And then sometimes it'll, you'll notice there's a little hole on the frame outside. That's where the manual override is for the slide. So it just depends once again on the make and model of your travel trailer. But hopefully this has given you some tips and some tricks on enjoying your RV because the camping world, that's what we wanna do. We wanna make sure your RVing experience is as best as it could be. But at any time you need help, either bring it into one of our over 185 service centers or give us a call and we're gonna make sure to help you enjoy that camping experience.